Hey everyone, welcome to today's uh, session. So today we'll be going through some of the incidents that I've been uh, looking at in cyber warfare. We'll learn something about ransomware, what's the trend there, there are some new attacks, uh, what's happening on the cryptocurrency side from cyber security perspective. There is a new vulnerability reported in a particular car manufacturer. So we'll learn about that. There is a new uh, botnet focused on DDoS that's uh, found. And also we'll talk some things about mobile uh, security. Okay. Let's get started with cyber warfare. So there's a new group uh, that has been reported. It's called Killnet and uh, it's focused on DDoS as an attack method. Uh, fo and it is targeting Ukrainian uh, organizations or, or pro-Ukrainian organizations. So for people who don't understand DDoS, uh, the full form is uh, denial of distributed denial of services attack. And in, in this attack, what happens is uh, multiple systems uh, try to reach out to a particular service, example, a website. And when the number of systems uh, requesting a particular service, like browsing a website, uh, it increases beyond a threshold the, the website gives up. And that's the commonly used uh, method uh, in, in this uh, scenario or in this uh, with this actor. Okay, so this group was first spotted in January 2022 uh, when they launched an ad on uh, one of the online forums and they promoted their DDoS as a service. So DDoS, you know, people can uh, run their own tools, they can write their own tools or software, or they can hire groups like Killnet to conduct those attacks. Now, what they promised is uh, is a decentralized botnet, which means it is distributed all across the world, that and it leveraged blockchain technology with uh, control of over seven hundred thousand bots. So it seems like a large uh, group of uh, bots or systems. Uh, by the way, full form of botnet is robotic networks, uh, and then in February, what happened is this group. Uh, pivoted towards hacktivism, uh, they launched attacks in response to anonymous uh, targeting Russian entities uh, after Russia invaded Ukraine. So these guys took side of Russia and they were retaliating what anonymous was doing. And we covered this in our uh, previous podcast where we had we showed some of the incidents where anonymous hacked uh, some of the Russian uh, ministries, some departments. They in fact uh, uh, breached one of or m one more than one media outlets. Uh, showing uh, the real uh, video clippings of uh, what's happening in Ukraine on the ground. Okay. Now, Kilnet claimed to take down the official website of the president of Ukraine and 25 other Ukrainian state websites in their DDoS attacks. But in the last four months, they have been known to target websites of eight Polish airports uh, because of Poland's supply of Ukraine material to Ukraine. They also breached 12 entities in the Czech Republic across sectors like aviation, banking, government, military and telecom. They also attacked nine Estonia based entities in government, military and telecom sectors and eight major internet ISPs and two traffic exchanges that are based in Ukraine. Okay. Now how this group uh, worked in last few months is they were supported or joined by multiple other groups. So a group called Zacnet joined in March and they announced it and uh, they said that they will launch DDoS attack against critical infrastructure and government of Ukraine. Then the group called Fucknet joined them and, and again uh, what they promised is they will launch DDoS campaign, campaigns against public and private sector organizations located in countries that support Ukraine. And then a subgroup called Legion was uh, created out from this group to carry out DDoS attacks only. Now to date, there are six groups that have been tracked under the Legion division and each group had its own uh, attack site. So it's like making a large structure and after, once the large structure is in place, they create smaller teams to carry out attacks on specific uh, organizations uh, based on whatever uh, decisions that are being made. Now how they are doing it uh, or we call them TTPs, tool tactics and procedures. So they've been using Telegram and they're providing links of various scripts to launch these attacks. Uh, so a common tool that has been there for ages is called LOIC or Low Orbit Iron Cannon. And then uh, 
some other tools like crypto sensors, instance sensors, etc. And also they have their own DDoS malware. Okay. Now how they are recruiting members is they are posting ads on multiple online communities. There are uh, 50,000 members of multiple cha Telegram channels that are supposed to be associated with this group. But most of these subscribers of these channels, they are not involved in actual killing operations. Okay. However, a Telegram channel associated with Legion has grown from 2,800 members in the beginning of May to 7,600 members in, in the beginning of June. Okay. Now, specific to those six groups that you remember from Legion, none of them have more than 300 members now so it's very common for people to join and and, and look at what's happening in this group doesn't mean all of them are uh, cyber criminals but some of them are carrying out activities like that okay now also in another uh, incident a group of chinese uh, hackers uh, uh, have been reported uh, to target uh, us reporters uh, before the capital hill attack as well as Russian invasion and so this is a new report talking about how long these uh, cyber actors or cyber criminals have been active so there are two groups one group is called TA412 also known as Zirconium another group called uh, TA459 so for those who are new to cyber security in, it's very common for uh, companies or researchers cyber security researchers to give a identify to these cyber criminals and sometimes uh, multiple companies are could be tracking same group of cyber criminals and they come up with their own uh, names and hence you see uh, multiple names coming from uh, with for the same group okay now going back to ta412 uh, they uh, been sending phishing emails to, to these us based journalists since early 2021 and uh, it's believed that this this group of uh, actors are aligned to Chinese government interest. Okay. Uh, also in 2022, they were this group was also uh, reported to connect be connected to the U.S. presidential campaign, as well as other think tanks that focused on international relations. Okay. Now, why they are targeting journalists? Because journalists handle sensitive information before it becomes public. Right. And their reporting requires maintaining source networks across government and the private sector. Now, if anybody who is targeting Chinese government, which in this case happened, so these journalists were writing uh, issues about China's social media privacy, also ch uh, Chinese disinformation campaign, uh, which signaled uh, interest uh, from the China state in these narratives. Uh, because then it can lead to negative global opinion or perception of uh, or perception of China, right? So they become uh, subjects of interest for the China uh, state government, and uh, that's when these groups, I believe, started uh, uh, targeting these uh, people. Okay. Now, how they are working or TTPs? They are targeting the work email accounts of journalists. This is the most common method using phishing emails. They have uh, also leveraged it. Uh, technique called web beaconing or or so known as tracking pixels now this technique is typically used in in websites to track number of unique visitors uh, uh, so what what happens is the website uh, would contain a code or an image that uh, will not be visible to the end user but it gets downloaded on the browser of the person who's browsing and it tracks unique properties of this system and eventually shows it on the website and similar technique can be implemented on the email side also so going back to this case uh, in this scenario uh, what the end user gets is an email and I'll, I'll remind you some of something which is very common is when you uh, receive certain emails that have images the the email client tip often does not download images you know, uh, they, uh, they they typically block it or they let you do it manually now same thing is happening in this case so these images that were part of the email uh, once the users downloads them they send a request back to their uh, master server or the controlling server where data like uh, their the end users external visible ip address user agent string or email address and uh, status of the user account uh, is sent to the server of uh, maintained by attacker okay this was done by this group the other group was using uh, 
malicious document created using the royal road uh, creator and this is something that we discussed in the last podcast also so this software if you uh, upload a malicious mal- uh, software uh, in this case example chinoxy malware along with a word file or a rtf file the output of that uh, software can be a malicious one file okay then some the attacker can set that as an email attachment and in this case this software uh, or this email contained links to some of the uh, media uh, communication by uh, an event and the software or the malware was uploading data to a compromised pakistani government uh, email address to send emails okay uh, so it looked normal to anybody who's reading but even in the back end it's sending or uploading data so that was on the cyber warfare side also there is a new botnet uh, so botnets are very common in in the world of cyber security uh, but mantis uh, is something new what what they have done is they've been running or uh, the cyber criminals have been running this botnet on uh, hacked virtual servers which are hosted in the uh, cloud based data centers so t- for the last few years what was happening is the cyber criminals would get hold of vulnerable uh, routers uh, or dvrs uh, and then these software these routers or cameras will uh, run uh, the cam- the dos attacks okay but in this case this uh, this botnet was operating from these 5000 compromised systems these machines are powerful which means the capacity of attack was high so it led to around 26 million rps on june 20 in in june uh, that that was eventually blocked it was a brief attempt uh, but uh, computationally it was very expensive uh, and uh, then this botnet launched 3000 http ddos attacks and 36% of these attacks were targeted against telco and internet sectors as well as game publishers and news organizations okay. it also attacked some of the french organization website gambling website and e-commerce platforms so from for me the interesting part was use of cloud uh, providers infrastructure now you have to refer back to the shared uh, cyber security resp- uh, model or shared responsibility what model in the cloud world with the cloud provider doesn't uh, uh, take responsibility of cyber security for your infrastructure let's say launching a website simplest example you are putting it one of the cloud providers you own the security of that website okay so no provider guarantees that unless you have taken a service from them so you know be careful on what you are subscribing uh, and be at least maintain basic cyber security uh, controls on your uh, uh, applications or websites that you are uh, managing or maintaining okay moving on to the ransomware side uh, there is a new ransomware uh, tied to uh, north korea it's called holy ghost and the group that has been uh, behind it is uh, tracked as dev0530 this is this group is targeting little to mid sized business including uh, manufacturing corporations financial institutes educational institutes etc and uh, what this ransomware does is it encrypts all the file with an ex- all the files on the system with a holy ink ink extension the payments are done using bitcoin the user is re- redirected to an onion web page okay and also they are uh, known to deploy double extortion scheme which means they are telling their victims that if you don't pay ransomware we will leak this data uh, on social media or we'll tell it to your clients okay which means reputation is a threat so organizations would lo- most likely pay now this threat actor dev0530 has been known as uh, uh, plutonium also or dark soul and endari so multiple names uh, and uh, they've been uh, used uh, they've been using resources by uh, this uh, you know uh, by the uh, uh, the group called plutonium okay now uh, so just to clarify this dev0530 is associated now this could be same people sub group it could be a sub group of these this actor group or it can be subcontractors anything uh, it could be anything when it comes to th- you know threat groups there have been multiple changes happening across the world uh, uh, as far as these uh, cyber criminals are concerned okay 
Now also, uh, there is a new trend happening on the ransomware side. The ransomware providers are making searchable databases of victim data. So a group called Black Cat, also known as Alfie, they uh, they put up uh, ads on website so that they have uh, sites available where you anybody can look for stolen data for their targets. Uh, so Logbit have also done it uh, apart from uh, Black Cat and Logbit has been uh, uh, they have created a new domain and this domain uh, contains victim data leaks in files okay and it contains data from uh, both past and present victims now typically this data is sold uh, uh, using a commercial model or it can be free also depending on the sensitivity of data how relevant it is etc okay. uh, going to black cat again black cat has become bolder they recently demanded a ransomware of 2.5 million dollars the victim is not known yet supposedly they are based in nordics and uh, this is uh, highest amount to my knowledge that they have offered so far not the highest amount act asked by uh, any uh, ransomware group so far I remember in 2021, 70 million was asked by this group called Revel and Black Cat is one of the fastest growing uh, ran, uh, ransomware as a service uh, based cyber gang and they use multiple techniques of extortion which includes encryption of systems, file, data theft, DDoS at attack and harassment. Now by the way, they also offer discounts, not not just Black Cat, most of these uh, ransomware providers, they ask some money and typically at 50% or lower they are uh, they negotiate and close the transaction uh, this group has been known to attack multiple customers uh, or multiple organizations including swiss port in fab they are also targeting florida international university and university of north carolina INT. okay uh, they also attacked bandai namco if you remember bandai namco they are creators one of one of my favorite games called pac-man also tekken i love it uh, when I used to play and they are a Japanese uh, video game giant they are number three in terms of revenue in Japan uh, in the uh, video gaming company uh, sector okay so their revenue was seven billion dollars in 2021 uh, they added uh, Bandai Na so Black Cat added Bandai Namco in their list of victims but Bandai Namco hasn't confirmed that it was this particular group they are saying that we are investigating we'll get back to you there are some there is a breach done by a third party and uh, we are investigating and th they also promise that they will uh, release details of the attack once the investigation is concluded and black cat has been growing right so right i think they are on number three in terms of the uh, ransomware focused gangs okay. also ransomware have hit a debt collection co firm called pfc uh, professional finance company so this company it manages in uh, debt unpaid debt of hospitals and healthcare organizations so they have around 650 customers and in this particular attack data of uh, around 1.9 million patients is effective this data contains patient names addresses account balances and in some instances birth date social security numbers health insurance information and treatment data now they have done a data breach disclosure Two, two of their customers, Bay Health Medical Center in Delaware as well as Coleman County Medical Center in Texas have also done a data breach notification. This is mandated as part of the data uh, cyber security laws of uh, America. So it is good. But remember this is not the first time a debt collection agency has been had. Another organization called AMCA was also uh, attacked and they had uh, uh, around 20 million rec records of patients that were stolen. Now if if you are wondering, hey, this is another cyber security ransomware attack, you no, know, yes, but learn any organization that doesn't have cyber basic cyber security controls in place, they will be attacked either to make money, either to steal sensitive data and then eventually sell it underground. So if you are in the business of, of IT or you are using IT for a business, please implement these cyber security controls. Uh, very important. Uh, you are part of a larger supply chain ecosystem and you know you can always get impacted or become part of another uh, uh, attack okay. uh, 
moving on to the crypto side uh, there is a new crypto mining attack that was found and this uh, this is so these are essentially systems that were hosted on microsoft azure uh, hackers were able to exploit azure uh, not azure but the bad configuration so typically what happens is these hackers will try to find open machines it's pretty easy to write a script today a lot of scripts are available open source you can scan the entire internet in less than an hour i've seen instances where a new exploit comes example half name from microsoft uh, for microsoft exchange came last year within a few days there was exploits running on internet to find servers that have that are exchange servers okay so it's it has become that fast because of the larger computing power but going back to this attack so these cyber criminals they ex they were able to breach the cloud deployments of systems by exploiting a, a, a flaw in the environment configuration like a weak credential and patch software uh, or a misconfigured uh, cloud in infrastructure right so they what they do is then they mine crypto over there in these instances also uh, in the uh, github actions uh, they would put their code and so that uh, you know uh, the the github actions based workflows implement crypto mining in the software that it is tied to so uh, uh, please monitor uh, cyber security best practices even in your uh, ci cd pipelines i recommend doing a devsecops process relevant to latest threats okay don't just do basic things uh, you know basic cyber security is always good but uh, always look for threats like crypto mining in your infrastructure so there are a lot of third party uh, security tools that do that okay they provide you this functionality and then you keep on uh, adding your analysis or your understanding of these threats over it okay also uh, cryptocurrency mixers are getting popular so uh, Uh, there is a report that said that 51.8 million worth of crypto was mixed now uh, in in uh, uh, april so i mean this only tells me one thing lot of bad guys are going going towards mixing services because mixing is typically used to off obfuscate uh, sources of fund uh, general people don't do that okay uh, i for privacy yes sure but how many people understand it not many we have spoken about this in the past uh, a mixer called tornado cash was used by lazarus group of north korea to fund to cash out uh, or cash out to uh, uh, take out uh, 37 or around 40 million dollars i don't remember the number correctly but it was a large amount of money okay? so that attack, the the law enforcement companies can't find the sources of fund okay so that's uh, is a new trend uh, also uh, in terms of smart tech which is old generation hardware mixing with latest software honda uh, uh, cars uh, specific vulnerability is reported so earlier this year honda was forced to fix a specific vulnerability that allowed uh, their uh, cars uh, uh, to be you know they they allowed hackers to start and uh, open the vehicles okay and this was done by uh, eavesdropping on the unencrypted radio frequency between the key fob and the car to solve this problem what the honda did is they implemented a logic with, that created multiple random numbers between the key fob and the car however this is also exploited now somebody hacked it and uh, there are uh, you know reports that at least 10 popular models of honda released between 2020 2012 uh, to now have found uh, to be more susceptible to this attack and uh, which you know uh, lets leads them to claim that all honda models are vulnerable so i'm sure honda will will look after this but uh, you know as everything gets smarter these things will come up okay so make sure you are talking to a provider you are you have a basic firewall or a smart router in place uh, there are a lot of good uh, wifi routers available uh, on internet that have a basic firewall keep changing your passwords just don't uh, use this basic uh, passwords that are available as part of the uh, any smart device that you are buying okay moving on to the mobile threats there is a new malware uh, on android called mailbot 
Mailbot is a banking malware, banking focus malware specifically. It steals passwords, bank details, and content of crypto wallets from its user. It bypasses multi-factor authentication. It can also access your text messages, steal web browser cookies, and also capture screenshots. And it can spread itself by hijacking SMS capabilities. So it sends an SMS to all your contacts. And you know this is number three right now in June. Uh, followed, uh, you know, uh, so Alien Bot is number one, followed by Anubis, and then Mailbot. So it's very popular right now. Guys, sorry if you're hearing the noise of of dogs. Uh, I, you know, uh, yeah. And then WhatsApp has come up with a notification that uh, please don't use fake versions of or modified version of WhatsApp if they are promising something that WhatsApp doesn't doesn't offer. Typically, it's a malicious software. Okay. Also, uh, noticeable advisory. So, in uh, Feb 2022, uh, DHS launched its first cyber safety review board, comprising of 15 members from both private and public sector organizations. And this uh, group has recently come up with their first report uh, that mentions Log4j, calling it an endemic vulnerability. They, what they are saying is there's so many unpatched systems on internet that it will take at least a decade to fix all of them okay so i think log 4 is first endemic vulnerability to my knowledge in my memory uh, if you have heard of anything let me know but i think this is interesting with biden uh, administration taking cyber security so seriously so that was it for today i'm always thankful to the sources who help us get this knowledge thanks to all of you who are listening to this keep learning keep growing and I'll see you next time.